Flygon is back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and while it's not the strongest option, Flygon can still be a beast. It's got base 100 in both attack and speed, and with Dragon Dance this thing can definitely get going. Its ability Levitate allows it to take advantage of Terra by becoming electric to effectively have no weaknesses, and check switch-ins like Corviknight. Or we can go with the Steel Terra to handle Fairy and Ice moves, and with Stab, Earthquake, and Dragon Claw, Flygon can do some damage. Alright look, since Gen 3, I've always just really liked Flygon, so it makes its way onto my teams quite a bit just because it's just a cool dude. Today my goal is going to be to try to unlock this thing's full potential, and if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button, I promise you won't regret it, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Glamora, pretty classic lead, I decide to toss out the Excadrill, and we have an interesting matchup here, I have a little bit of the upper hand because... While we're both a couple of dudes who like to set up hazards, we can also both spin them away. However, with the Glamora only having access to the Mortal Spin, a Poison type move, it can't actually touch me. So, I'm just going to go directly for that Stealth Rock here. It's also an interesting matchup because we both have coverage uh, against each other with the ground. So, I'm really hoping they don't go for the Earth Power. And luckily for me, they do in fact just set up the Stealth Rock of their own. So, we've traded some rocks here, and I have a decision to make on whether or not I expect this thing to stay in. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot that wants to switch into this, so I just decided to just go directly for that Earthquake here, and I know that I'm faster, so I could get it off. However, they are going to end up switching, and they bring in the Cheeto Bird, the Cramorant, looking as orange as ever out here and confused, but he does not know where the hell he is, but he does know that he is floating above that Earthquake. So, makes a nice switch here, bringing in the Cramorant. He comes in for free, taking that Stealth Rock damage, however, and I am just going to end up going right for the Rapid Spin here. I know, I figure I could probably take one attack from this thing unless it's like max offensive with the choice specs so i go for that rapid spin get rid of the stealth rock they do end up going directly for that surf which i live with 11 hp just barely uh, which is actually pretty clutch because now i'm faster than everything on their team however i really don't have a lot to touch this thing i could try to roll for an iron head flinch but i decide since the hazards are taken care of i could potentially save the excadrill for later and I'm just going to end up going uh, right into the Lapras. If they decide to surf again, I can go, again, obviously, soak it up with my Water Absorb. But it turns out they're actually going to end up going for the Stockpile. So, boost both defenses by one stage. And it turns out we're working against uh, a defensive kind of setup Cramorant. And I'm out here bamboozled. I'm not even going to lie. I don't really have much to hit this thing with Lapras. So, I decide, you know what, I can actually just go for a Dragon Dance here. And try to set this thing up. We're both a couple of just weird water types that nobody uses. And uh, they end up going for that Air Slash. Not going to be able to do a whole lot with uh, without any you know help on the special side on that thing. So we take it nicely as Lapras has a shit ton of HP. And now I can go for the Ice, ice Shard. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be the Loaded Dice set with the, uh, the Icicle Spear. So I'm not able to do a whole lot of damage. And then I get hit with a Fish and then Icy Wind thrown at me, which is going to lower my speed. And Lapras is just overall about confused as shit over here. I've been Fish Slapped. And it's going wild over here. I go for one more Ice Shard. I honestly was just really hoping it was going to be a 2-hit KO. It actually does end up living, and now they go for the Surf. Likely expecting me to switch out there, or just uh, just making a misplay, going for that Surf on the Water Absorb. Regardless, one more Ice Shard is able to take care of the Cramorant, and that thing was hilarious. That thing's got to be one of my favorite mons to both use and play against, because it's just a, just a goofy little dude. You know who is not a goofy little dude? is Little Myth's big-ass fire mask over here. Ogre Pond is an absolute threat to my team. Nothing switches into this, and I figure I should probably just take some chip damage. I go for that Ice Shard, do get some solid chip here, and unfortunately they do power whip my ass. And Lapras, while we are into that kind of thing, it is going to actually be a bit too much and take care of me. So, the good news is, now this allows me a free switch. And what I can do is end up going into the Flygon. Now the reason is because I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing, and Dragon Dance Flygon actually looks like I'm in a pretty good position here. So, I go for the Dragon Dance. They expect me to go for an attack and end up clicking that Spiky Shield. But I say, I will not be touching those spikes today. Instead, we are absolutely busting it down on the, in the battlefield over here. So, I get that plus one attack and speed. And Flygon is in a great position here. Because uh, I'm for sure faster than this thing. And with the chip that we had in Earthquake, should be enough to take care of it. And that is going to knock out the Ogre Pond. So, that is a massive threat out of the way. 
Hearth Flame Ogre Pond is truly very scary. So seeing that thing gone, I'm in a great spot now, as they're gonna decide to go into Glamora. Now, if this thing was Focus Sash, it does lose that because of the Stealth Rock. And I'm thinking this seems too good to be true, considering there could be a Terra Fly coming here expecting the Earthquake. I just decided to go for the obvious play, and it is just gonna directly knock out the Glamora. Now, the reason why I wasn't worried about going for that Earthquake with the threat of the Terra Flying was just because of the fact that I know I can take at least one attack from this thing regardless, and the Earthquake does pay off. However, they do set up one layer of the Toxic Spikes on my end, which could prove to be a little bit annoying later. And also, now we got this little bunny-ass skin ribbon fairy type in front of us, where I know that I can't quite knock this thing out at just plus one with an Earthquake, um, and that's gonna leave me vulnerable to a fairy attack. But what I can do is commit the Terra. Now I'm running Terra Electric on this Flygon, and that's gonna make it so we obviously just take a neutral hit from the fairy attack, and then we should be able to two-hit KO this thing no problem. I like to run Terra Electric on Flygon because obviously it leaves you no weaknesses, but also Terra Blast Electric is really great for incoming things like Corviknight, um, and in general, it catches people off guard here. So that allows us to take the Hyper Voice, and also they do have the Quick Attack. That is gonna be Pixelate Quick Attack, so it gets the stab boost, but luckily we had just enough health to be able to live that and fire off one more Earthquake, takes care of the Sylveon, which is another big threat out of the way. And now, they bring in the Xbox 360. So listen, Metagross uh, has the opportunity to go for that priority with the Bullet Punch. Being Electric type, um, we obviously now resist it, but it still is probably in range if they are carrying the priority. Um, and they're actually gonna end up committing the Terra here. I actually expect them, if they don't have the Bullet Punch, to go for that uh, Terra of their own, to potentially Terra into something like a Flying type to resist an Earthquake. However, they do just go for the Terra uh, fighting. It's gonna put the old fist on his head, and I end up going for the Terra Blast just because you know it's kind of my safest option to guarantee I get some damage here if they don't Bullet Punch, which they do not. I do get a critical hit on the Terra Blast, and now they Hammer Arm, which actually misses. So that is wildly unfortunate. The <laughs> Hammer Arm miss is gonna end up costing them because now um, I obviously outspeed. They show that they do not have the priority with the Bullet Punch, and an earthquake just finishes off the Metagross. So you hate to see it if you're the if you're the Xbox there. You basically have to commit the Terra and go down. And uh, ridiculous light bulb Flygon is just flapping his wings with glee over here. So now the final Pokemon is going to be the Terrapagos. And this thing, it does not have a whole lot of hope left at this point because obviously we are faster with the Flygon. And unfortunately, just that plus one in Earthquake should not be able to knock this thing out. But with the Mons we've conserved in the back, I feel confident that we can we can finish it off. They actually end up going for the Meteor Beam here, which is actually quite interesting to see uh, this thing use its crazy-ass shell and then beam the hell out of me, where it actually also does have the Power Herb as well, so it gets it fully charged in one turn, beams the shit out of me just to display dominance. That's obviously going to <laughs> finish off the Flygon. Um, but not before we were absolutely able to go on a nice little tear here with one of the greatest damn shinies, and at this point, all I have to do is bring in the Infernape, who should be able to outspeed. Um, the turtle is, of course, just going to be that normal type. So a Mach Punch from this range should be able to finish this thing off. We do have to come in to that Toxic Spike, which is not really a big deal. But I can go for that priority, guarantee, guarantee we're able to go first here, and then break the shit out of that turtle shell. So that is going to take care of it, and it is going to be the end of the match. So I thought that was a pretty fun one. Definitely some misplays kind of on both ends. But regardless, all in good fun, super cool match. And uh, we love to see it. So, I do actually have one more game here for you. And that is because this match is actually insane. It comes right down to it. And this is one of the one of the closer matches I've had in a while. So if you've made it this far into the video and you do enjoy when I come at you with two matches for one video, make sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. And I do appreciate it. This match, we have a team that is looking pretty scary. And honestly, some very interesting threats. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Galarian Slow King, and I decided to switch it up and lead off with the Easy Bake Oven. I got the Rotom Heat out here, mostly because I was kind of expecting Swamp Hurt and I wanted to get a Will-O-Wisp off on it early, as they likely Stealth Rock, but at this point, I'm actually just gonna go straight for the Shadow Ball. I figure this thing probably doesn't have much that it can do to me, and I know that Slow King is likely on this team with the Icy Rock item to be able to go for that chilly reception and kind of enable the Slush Rush to Titan in the back. So. They actually end up going for the Future Sight. That's going to be a 120 power Psychic move coming at me in a few turns, which is pretty scary. And here, I would ordinarily go for the Volt Switch, expecting them to switch out to try to grab a matchup. But of course, I do know that the Ground-type with the Swampert is hanging around. So instead, I go for the Will-O-Wisp, 
And that actually works out perfectly because now, you know, we can cripple the Swampert. That's gonna make this thing a whole lot easier to deal with. However, I, I do wanna try to conserve Rotom as much as possible. I am heavy duty boots. I know that I can come in uh, easily even with the Stealth Rock up and it does look pretty nice here. So I just decided to switch into this thing's absolutely mortal enemy, which is gonna be the Meganium. So obviously Swampert to Meganium looks like a nice little, little medium rare steak, just easy meal for your boy. As of course they are gonna set up their Stealth Rock here and that is fine, because I get into Meganium. Unfortunately, however, we do have to take the future side attack. I'm mostly physically defensive, so that still does hurt on the special side quite a bit. Um, but if anything has to take it, I feel like Meganium's kind of, you know, generally one of my most disposable Pokemon in these matches. I just try to get it in to see if I can you know, stir, stir some shit up with it. But in general, he's here to substitute and lead seed and just be defensive. So. I know that Swampert is definitely not going to stay in here on a Giga Drain, as they decide to pivot into the Infernape. So, Infernape is going to come in, and I don't have any Stealth Rock up, unfortunately, but I get the Leech Seed off, and that's going to be pretty nice in kind of enabling what I want to do with this team. If I can Leech Seed Mons and then start to set up, um, I'm in a pretty good spot. However, Infernape is obviously not going to be great for the Meganium here. I at least can eat some leftovers and sap him, so I'm starting to get back some of that damage you know, from that future site. Um, and Meganium is pretty valuable in this match just because of that Swampert being around, so I do actually want to end up switching here, and I'm gonna go right back into the Rotom Heat. Uh, what that does is it, it puts me in a spot where I can try to make a play for some momentum, um, and in general, Inferno can't do a whole lot uh, to, the, to the oven here. So. They go for the old Iron Fist Fire Punch, which obviously doesn't do a whole lot, and then I grab some health back here. And we found ourselves in an interesting kind of spot uh, where our teams, they, they have great positioning on being able to switch into each other, where obviously now the Swampert wants to come in on an electric attack. I go for the Volt Switch regardless. The reason for that is because even if they do go into the Swampert, which they are going to switch into, um, it's obviously not going to touch it, but with this thing being burnt, I figure you know, it's not gonna be able to knock me out. And if I can just get a little bit of chip on this Swampert, it's gonna put the Flygon in a spot where I can pick it off later. So, this thing comes in, takes some burn damage, and at this point, I'm thinking, okay, staying in here is actually nice because they probably predict me to go into Meganium, and then we're just kind of in like a, a weird loop where they do actually make that prediction, go for the Ice Punch, which does literally nothing <laughs> to the Rotom. Um, as I do grab a nice little chunk with that Shadow Ball. So at this point, these interactions are actually pretty nice because what it does is it gives me a little bit of insight on kind of their play style, what they're predicting and kind of how they're gonna work with this team. So I just go for another Shadow Ball here. It turns out this asshole has a Citrus Berry, he has a nice little lunch time on the battlefield, gives them some health back and now they just decide to go for that flip turn. But of course with the burn, the Rotom is able to take that nicely. So at least I was still able to weaken the Swampert uh, a decent amount, and again with it burnt, it's not that big of a threat, you know, to the Flygon. So, they decide to pivot into the Noivern. At this point I'm thinking I really should have led and tried to get some Stealth Rock up here, as I don't really have much that wants to switch into a Draco Meteor, pretty much nothing wants to come in on Noivern if they make a nice prediction and expect the Comfey, I'm in a horrible spot, so I decided to just kind of let Fate take the wheel there, it turns out the Draco Meteor is going to absolutely demolish my ass, but the good news is now I get a Revenge Switch, and Nectar's coming in, ready to just get some of that sweet, sweet Nectar. Whereas, Comfey is literally a massive threat right now. I can actually go for a Calm Mind for free, and not only start boosting my stored powers, but also with Priority Draining Kisses, this thing looks pretty wild. So, they're gonna actually end up going into the Slow King here, as um, I'm not super afraid of the Slow King, I know at least with a Calm Mind. I should be able to take a Sludge Bomb or whatever this thing wants to throw at me. So, I get that nice little free, plus one special attack and special defense. Now, I do have the coverage with the stored power, but at this point, uh, it only has you know two boosts with this one from the special attack, one from the special defense. So what I'm actually gonna end up doing is commit the Terra Steel. I know for sure I, a poison move is gonna be coming in here, and that's gonna give me one more free turn uh, to grab some extra damage for that stored power, which is gonna be super effective again against the Slow King. So I put the ax on my head like the badass flower circle that I am, and being steel type is gonna put me in a great spot here because they do click the sludge wave. So obviously does no longer affect me. I do have to commit the Terra to be able to get this position, but I'm feeling like the payoff is definitely worth it because now I can go for the stored power. It's not quite gonna be able to knock this thing out, but it does uh, some solid chip here. And now they actually end up going for the chili reception, which ends up being a nice play because not only does that make it snow, it also switches this thing out. So the next time it comes in, 
Uh, it grabs some health back with the regenerator. And also this is going to enable the Satite. So depending on whether or not that thing was holding the Icy Rock, this snow could be around to stay. And this fucking whale is a whale of a problem right now. I can essentially, all I have to do is go for the, the Draining Kiss. I don't quite have enough Calm Minds to be able to grab the full knockout here. Uh, so sadly, this is going to allow this thing to uh, be able to hit me hard with an Earthquake because now I'm Steel type. But at least being able to get off that Draining Kiss put this thing in a spot where you know it wouldn't be able to Belly Drum. I was really hoping that they were going to try to Belly Drum there. Um, but obviously, me, me knocking down more than half, they wouldn't be able to get it off. So we do actually see that this thing is going to be Life Orb. And I don't have a whole lot of answers for this Titan, but what I do have is the Hitmonchan. Now, Hitmonchan comes in, and judging by this person's playstyle, I feel like they're gonna try to make a switch here knowing that a mock Punch is coming. So I'm gonna try to grab uh, a great position here by you know, going ahead, predicting them to switch and bringing in Excadrill. I have a good, great matchup against pretty much anything other than Infernape who's not gonna come in, and the Excadrill can try to set up some Stealth Rock here or get some shit going. So. I make the switch here, I come in, break the mold a little bit for no reason, and they actually stay in and go for the play rough. So that ends up being a pretty big misplay on my end because it almost knocks out the Excadrill, um, but it does actually take the Rocky Helmet and the Life Orb puts it to like one HP, which is insane. insane. So I now decide to switch out the Excadrill. I figure this thing is pretty valuable to me and I know that they're gonna click an Earthquake here. So I can go into Flygon. Um, unfortunately, you know, I come in, Take a little bit of Stealth Rock Chip, they do go for that Earthquake. However, you know, I'm in a spot where I'm not going to be able to outspeed this thing because it still has Slush Rush. And Flygon looks amazing here if I can enable it with some Dragon Dances. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make another switch, go back into the Excadrill. Uh, now the reason for that is because I know that they can't Earthquake, we've seen Play Rough. But also, I assume they have, you know, something in the form of an Ice move here. And regardless, uh, Ex Exadrill actually can take one attack here, likely depending on what they go for. So I bring back in the drill. Turns out they're actually going to go for the Ice Shard, which is going to be able to not knock us out, and it's going to knock himself out with that Life Orb. So we kind of get the best of both worlds there in that Exadrill gets to stay alive. Um, and now the one of the big sweeper threats is out of the way. So in comes the Swampert. Now, Obviously, Swampert is not going to die to an Earthquake here, but I want to prioritize getting up my Stealth Rock. I feel like it's going to really uh, kind of limit this mid to late game for me on, in terms of them being able to switch. As I get the Stealth Rock up because I'm faster, but they do go for the Flip Turn. I'm actually, I'm totally fine with the Flip Turn because that means they have to take Rocky Helmet damage and any amount of chip on the Swampert is appreciated. But also, since they knock me out with the Pivot move, now they have to switch into whatever they want and then I can figure out a matchup. So. They decide to go into Petra Runt. Now again, Petra Runt is an interesting Pokemon in that it really only excels in physical defense at like a base 160 uh, defense. So the bad news is all I have left are essentially going to be physical attackers. Obviously, I can't go Meganium. So I figure, you know what? It is time to see what this Flygon is made of. I also know, you know, the Petra Runt can't really knock me out in one hit here. So what I'm going to do is just end up going for the Dragon Dance. I really need at least one speed boost to be able to outspeed their Dragon in the back, which comes in the form of the Noivern. So I get that Dragon Dance up. I know that I can take a, one attack from this thing, but it turns out they're actually gonna go for the Parting Shot. So that gets rid of the plus one attack that I had, which is pretty important for Flygon to be able to do the damage that I need to their team. But the important thing is I still do retain that speed boost because now they pivot into the Noivern here and after some Stealth Rock Chip, it's looking like even without the plus one attack, I can knock this thing out with a Dragon Claw, and we're still faster. So, I do go for that Dragon Claw, takes care of the Noivern. That is an amazing Pokemon to see gone and fly gone. Even with, you know, the, the Parting Shot, we're still in a pretty good position here, being super fast, faster than everything on their team, um, and we can still hit relatively hard. So, now they decide to go into the Swampert once again. This thing is looking up at me like a toddler that tells me he threw up and I can just go for an Earthquake here. But it turns out this Swampert is like the most defensive damn Swampert on this side of the Mississippi. It is able to live in Earthquake and fire off an Ice Punch, but since this thing was burnt, Flygon is able to take that super four times super effective attack, and then the burn knocks out the Swampert. So it's actually wildly unfortunate that, that I wasn't able to knock that thing out because of the damn parting shot. And now we have the fucking culprit here who is the Petron. So. I'm just gonna go straight for that Earthquake, get as much damage as possible. I know it's not quite gonna knock it out because this thing is so damn bulky. And this opens the door for them to go for the Malignant Chain. Now, this is a 50% chance to get the poison. Knocks me down to 11 HP. 
and of course, they get the poison. It also gives you a confusion because this thing's a puppeteer asshole, but luckily for me, I'm actually running Lumberry, so that is extremely clutch. Lumberry not only cures my poison, but also the confusion at the same time. So we get the old two for one Lumberry here, and that could not have been better luck because being able to live that attack now means that I can then fire off an Earthquake here and finish off the Petra Runt, and that is an annoying little poison boy out of the way. And Flygon is looking to come in pretty damn clutch here. Off to a bad start, we're starting to claw our way back here. But the bad news is they do still have the Terra in their back pocket. So they can bring in the Slowking, who's looking relatively healthy after the Regenerator. I do have the coverage with the Earthquake, but again, they do still have uh, the access to the Terra here, which they are going to commit, and it just depends on what this thing wants to Terra into. Turns out they're going to go for the defensive Water Terra here, which makes it so that obviously it's not going to be, it's going to be a neutral Earthquake hit. And again, without a Dragon Dance, an Earthquake is not quite going to be able to knock out the Slowking, and then this allows it to go for the Slack Off. So they have two Pokemon left. They have this thing and the Infernape in the back. They obviously cannot bring in the Ape. So I'm just going to stay in here, fire off as many Earthquakes as I possibly can to try to chip it uh, to range to where it's looking like Hitmonchan is going to have to do it because obviously Meganium provides no value uh, against the Infernape. So they finished me off with the Sludge Wave there. And now it is time for Baby Groot to come out and see if we can make it happen. So the good thing is Hitmonchan has enough special defense to where I should be able to take pretty much any attack from this thing. And I can finish it off here with a Drain Punch, or at least I feel like. So I go for the Drain Punch here. They're actually going to make a nice play, end up switching out the Slowking because that's going to allow it to come back in later and get that Regenerator. But the good news is they also have to go into the Infernape who does not want to come in on a Drain Punch, especially after that Stealth Rock chip, and that's going to take care of the Ape, and the Hitmonchan is sitting at full HP. So, it actually, it, it kind of comes in clutch that they did have to commit the Terra on the Slowking, because if they didn't, um, you know, I obviously don't have anything to touch it with the Hitmonchan, but being Water-type, having a neutral Drain Punch uh, puts us in a much better position. So, I'm just going to continue going for the Drain Punches. It actually just barely lives. This thing has to have some type of physical defense investment. It allows them to now go for that slack off and we're getting close to the battle timer here, which is wild. But I do actually have the swords dance on my side. So I know that I can take an attack from this thing. I can swords dance, double the old attack as they actually end up going for slack off once again. And it's an interesting spot because it's like, obviously they have to touch me if they want to try to win the match. But with the plus two swords dance, two more drain punches should be able to finish it off. But we actually, just uh, come in clutch with a critical hit there, and that is going to finish off the Slow King and effectively win us the match. So that was just a super close game. I feel like it was it was well played on both sides, and um, it was it was definitely a fun one. So thank you guys very much for watching. For all the support on these videos is greatly appreciated, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace out.